Good evening, everyone. Rakesh Goswani again. Thanks a lot for joining. I can hear an amazing clap uh, going on in the area where I live. I hope you have clapped and appreciated all our healthcare personals. I think it's an amazing, amazing time for us to appreciate what they're doing for us. Now, I'm going to uh, switch on my video and you should be able to see me now. There I am and I am very happy to see all of you and uh, I can see some of your faces, some of you are not. And this is an amazing platform for all of us to come together. Um, and the reason I'm doing these webinars and engagements is to connect with you talk about what's going on make sense of it all learn from you as well so once again thank you for joining in and uh, we have about 38 participants and more and more joining every minute as we speak and uh, i'm sure all of you are from various places of our country there are a few things that i'd like to talk about before we get going just a little bit of housekeeping exercises um, since there are lots of participants from all over the city and probably other cities as well put yourself on mute i have a centralized control as well so right now i have muted all of you um, so in case you're unmuting yourself and don't remember it just press the mute pop mute button because it will help control our noise as we go along and the background noise the second is that there is an amazing feature called chat i want all of you to find that feature it should be uh, there would be some kind of three buttons on the right something called more and uh, you should be able to find that and uh, some of you are writing to me. Nivedita has written to everyone, not able to hear me. Uh, I think others are able to hear me. And uh, uh, Nivedita, you may want to check your microphone. Sometimes the microphone does this problem. And uh, this is what happens. So just try and fix it. If not, log off and log in again. And it should be fine. And... Uh, so what I want to talk about is um, conversations and ideas about our education system, what this 21st century or 21st century is going to look like. And I'll probably just share my views for about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, so feel free to get those questions coming. If you see the chat window, and I can see everybody writing already, and I'm happy to see that there's Zishan, there's Sukumar. I can see two lovely, lovely boys, uh, uh, Adityan and J Devanand. Are you the two lovely boys? I can see them looking at me right now. Uh, wave at me, GV Adityan and GV Devanand. Yay, there you go. So I'm so happy to have them. And uh, please feel free to switch on your videos if you would like. And it's completely up to you. Um, uh, so that we could see each other. But if you have a personal question to me, um, don't uh, send that question to everyone. Send it to me personally, and I will take these questions as we go along on a first-come, first-served basis. So um, what I want to do is just talk about uh, what's going on in the world of education and uh, how do we make sense of all of this. So. Uh, you should be able to see my slides and you should be able to see um, something on your screen. And today I want to talk about the future of uh, 21st century. Actually, 21st century is already happening. And what I want to talk about is uh, how this will impact all of us as we go along. I call it the future of work and careers. And if you look at all of us preparing for this 21st century, we are going to schools, we are going to colleges, and then we go to the work. And as we speak, this entire dynamic of 21st century is changing. So let's see if we can make sense of it 
and let's see if we can understand that so i'm going to ask you a series of questions and here are my questions and i want you to take a few minutes to absorb these numbers that you see on your screen here you'll see numbers like 10 billion 175 and 3 and these numbers are fascinating so i'm going to um, probably take you through uh, each of these numbers one by one now all of you can also engage with me by raising a hand and in case i'm not able to see your hand you could chat with me i'll try my best to be as responsive as possible research says that in the next 30 years there are going to be 10 billion people in this world and uh, that's a very bizarre number that we should all be very cognizant amount about that today we're about 7.3 billion i don't think we are reducing we are only going to increase and if you feel that we are going to be a crowded world, I think you're absolutely right. So there is going to be a huge amount of uh, people on this planet, which means there are lots of opportunities also, but also means that there is going to be a lot of challenge as we go along. The second number is 100. And 100 is the average life expectancy of a child who's born in this brave new world today. And if you look at life expectancy, it is going better and better. And uh, maybe our parents' generation are touching about 70, 75. Maybe my generation will touch about 80, 85. Now, I'm not saying that I will guaranteed live to 80, 85. But all I'm saying is that we are all going to live longer. And the child who is uh, going to be born today is probably going to be living till about 100 years. Now, that's a very huge, bizarre number that I think we should be worried about. The third number is even more interesting. If you are going to live for about 100 years, the next number, 70, talks about the number of productive years we have in front of us, which is 70. And uh, if you look at the 70 long years in front of you, I think you should start thinking about what would you do in these 70 long years? The next one is five, that in these 70 long years, you will be changing your jobs. I'm sorry, let me step back. You will not be changing your jobs. You'll be changing your jobs like 100 times, but you'll be changing your careers at least five times. And I mean careers which are totally disconnected. A doctor could become a lawyer, a lawyer could become a poet, a poet could become a scientist, and so on and so forth. If you look at my own career, I'll give you a perspective. I was trained or actually not trained. I was pushed into engineering because there's nothing else I wanted to do. I didn't want to become a doctor and uh, commerce was not in our family. So there was only one choice left for me, which was engineering, did computer engineering, came to a job, very soon, very soon changed that job and became a business guy. Then I became a teacher. And now I'm an entrepreneur. So I have changed my career four times. And five is the minimum. All of you out there will probably pivot your careers too. And the last one is by far my favorite and the most interesting. The last one is a number called three. And this number says that there will be three places where human beings will live. The first one is Earth, where we are all living. The other two are Moon and Mars. And just like we all had a passport, which we used to show off that, hey, here's my visa. I went to London or US. Very soon, you all will be showing off another passport that, hey, I went to Moon Valley or Mars Valley. And right now, we are in Silicon Valley or Bangalore Valley. This day, I think my dear friends has come. And this is the brave new world I want all of you to start thinking about that. I think our entire education system is missing this brave new world. And I'm very worried about it. Because if you look at the education system, it is gearing us for an education which takes us into account that we work only till about 55. But I think we're going to work till about 75, 80 without any problem. And probably we live to about 90, 95 without any problem. And this is a good time for us to really look back 
at education system and rethink our priorities. Now, when you look at this entire education system, many of these things are not being discussed and uh, many of these things change a lot. And why do I believe in change? I think the answer is that 10 years ago, none of us in this room would have even bothered to understand that there is a self-driving car and uh, today's self-driving car is a reality. I'm pretty sure some of you would have experienced a self-driving car. And if not, you will very soon. And if you look at Airbnb, none of us imagined that we would allow strangers to rent a spare room. And uh, 20 years ago, or maybe even 15 years ago, it was unheard of. And 50 years ago, we never imagined that there would be a PC on every home or every desk. And if you take this conversation to 500 years ago, nobody imagined that Earth was a sphere. There was a conversation that Earth is flat. So I think we as a human society are people who do look at uh, change very, very interestingly. And I think I want to encourage you that change will happen. Whether we like it or not, I don't think we have any option but to adopt it. And uh, here are some of the jobs that didn't exist 10 years ago. There was nothing called a drone operator. A drone operator didn't exist. And uh, a social media manager, a Uber driver, a driverless car engineer, a cloud computing specialist, a sustainability manager, a YouTube content creator, an online physician. There was an online, there's now an online physician. And all of these jobs just didn't exist about 10 years ago. And I'm pretty sure that there would be many jobs that another two or three years will come and I don't even know and you don't even know. The point I'm trying to make is that this is the brave new world we all need to start living in and we need to adopt. And in this brave new world, we all have to look at how we learn, how do we live and what do we do to become a little bit more prepared. So the next one is um, this particular idea that uh, happens that um, what is the 21st century going to look like and what are we actually preparing for? And I feel that there are three fundamental problems that the education system has today. And these three fundamental problems are something that I'm very bothered. And I'm a teacher. And for a teacher, these problems are extremely important for us to start looking at. So I'm going to talk to you about these three problems. And then we'll probably make sense of it and open up to questions. Here's problem number one. The first is many of us, including me, are highly disconnected and bored learners. And uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Calvin and Hobbes. And if you haven't read called Calvin and Hobbes, I encourage you to read that. Uh, Calvin is actually a great epitome or a symbol of a student who doesn't want to go to school. And he is forced to go to school because there is no other choice. And if you look at uh, how he fights this whole system, it's quite hilarious. In fact, his dream is to actually um, make sure that the school doesn't exist. And uh, he wants to just take a F-16 over his school and bomb the school. And I think I, I think many of us would have a secret desire to bomb our schools as well because we find them extremely boring and we find them completely disconnected to what we want to learn. And Kelvin is one case which I think uh, there is a strip of Kelvin which talks about it, that his father says that uh, you seem to learn dinosaurs so much, but why don't you learn other subjects like with the same interest? And Kelvin actually looks at his father and says that because I don't like learning anything else, I only like to learn about dinosaurs. So what a child or a learner wants to learn, the schools don't even want to talk about it. The second problem which I see is but I think we are preparing ourselves in the school system for a reality which is very, very different. And this photo I got from some source and internet, it's not mine. And the title of this uh, photo is the relationship between the curriculum and uh, reality of the world. And I think this is absolutely true. Um, 
I don't recall a single episode where something I learned in class 10th or 11th is applicable to my work today. In fact, I don't even remember anything which I've learned in my engineering college or an MBA college which is applicable to my work today. How we learn is a combination of experiences using mistakes and some mentors and little bit of theoretical knowledge which helps us move forward. But majority of the books, majority of the concepts that we spend time on in school systems have no relevance to the world today. And this is very, very scary. And the last one is even more scary that the way we test people, the way we uh, choose a method, which is an exam, uh, which finds out how good you are, is seriously flawed because not everybody is good at exam. There are some people who have severe fears of exams but the marks decide how good you are and this person with high marks can have other serious behavior issues but then the world ignores that and they think that the score in a math exam is the uh, mirror of the person's personality and i think these problems nowadays bother me so we have to find ways to create a system which acknowledges this uh, challenge and starts working on creating a better place for our children. And I don't mean children as young people. I'm, I work a lot with teenagers and I work a lot with youngsters in the age bracket of 20 to 30. And School of Meaningful Experiences has a lot of programs for all of you. Now, the result of all of this is a learner who is extremely bored, uh, does not enjoy learning, the teachers come and uh, give an overdose in the classroom, which is full of theory, slides, books. The students are then supposed to memorize all of that and vomit it into an exam, get a score, and that score decides your future. And I think they find this system really unfair and unproductive. And I can tell you that you are not alone in that. I think the system itself feels that it is very inefficient. But as of today, this is the best we have. We are trying to solve that problem by making it a little bit better and better, but I think it's going to take a lot of time. Now, one thing coronavirus and the pandemic has suddenly done is that suddenly the parents and executives and the people who earlier were doubting online education suddenly feel that online education is extremely important. And I've been working on online education for the last five years, and I can tell you that Obviously, you cannot compare apples and oranges, but you should never compare apples and oranges. I think each fruit has their own flavor. Each fruit has their own benefits. And I think you should appreciate the fruit for what it gives you rather than comparing it to something else and not finding meaning out of it. Online education is extremely meaningful. Now, if you're expecting it to be the same as a physical classroom, I can tell you that I think that expectation is wrong. But what you should do is, use it as a tool to enhance your learning and make a better life because now with the way the world is going online education is a reality once the learner is coming out of the system with poor scores a very big problem that they face is that these marks have no correlation to their capability so they're often misunderstood and hence misguided and i was a very misguided student when i was uh, learning in class 12th and when I came to my engineering college and even when I came to my first job I was completely lost and confused my friends were writing cat gre gate and I didn't know what to do and uh, through all of this I tried to make sense of my life for a student this is a very big problem feeling disoriented bewildered perplexed, confused, and lost is a normal thing. And I want to tell all of you not to feel bad about it, but I encourage all of you to do something about it because it's extremely critical that uh, you have to make sense of this world in the way the world works and see if you can help yourself with that. Now, having said that, this is the problem. It's a tough problem to crack. I want to talk about this one of my favorite movies called The Martian and I hope you have seen that. Martian is this amazing movie of a person stranded on Mars all alone and Mark Watney is that person and he's actually a botanist and uh, his survival depends on his ability to learn and there's nobody else and if he doesn't learn 
how to use the electronics if he doesn't learn how to grow potatoes if he doesn't learn how to make oxygen and water vapor he will not survive so he finds out all of these things learns how to learn and survives those horrible years all alone in fact there's a very famous scene where he has to communicate with earth and he finds a way of communication using a hexadecimal system which he had studied and a hexadecimal system is something all of us have learned we probably have memorized those two lines wrote an exam but none of us know what hexadecimal is and he figures out a way to create a hexadecimal system to communicate with earth and that's how they are able to reach out to him and that's how he he he, he survives i think if you look at martian and if you look at the message of the movie which is a fantastic message i think what they are trying to tell us is that if we have to survive and if we have to make progress we have to apply lots and lots of concepts and those concepts need not be memorized they come with experience they come with mistakes it is the ability of the person to learn how to learn find a way to try it out in a lab make sense of it and fail from it and see if it can help him in his life and this is what education should be this is what our schools and colleges should be doing the purpose of education is not to give you marks the purpose of education is to help you learn how to learn and all of us are connected if you look at india right now we are 1.3 billion people there are about 240 million people in schools close to 40 million in uh, post graduate programs and ug programs and another another 10 20 million connected indirectly in some form or the other so there are about 300 million people uh, connected with education directly and if you look at their parents which are one or two they are also directly connected because they spend the maximum amount of their money and time on their child's education so half of our country is connected to education and we need to all come together to make it more meaningful and help our children do something about it now mark watney's case of the martian also exposes the six c's which is what we focus on at school of meaningful experiences and these six c's are communication and i'll tell you a simple concept of how communication helps that when you are in a school when you are writing those exams a lot of time is spent in isolating yourself so that you're not distracted and you can do well in those exams but when you go to a college or a outside job you have to talk to people you cannot work in isolation so you have to collaborate with each other and you have to communicate with each other and when you are in front of people i know that how badly we all react to these things that we feel judged we feel low on self esteem because we have never tried these things and we are not able to communicate so we just keep quiet and other people think that we are not confident and this has a drastic impact on our career our marks are not going to help us beyond a point i think what we need to learn is how to express ourselves and i have worked with two american multinationals and i've traveled a lot what i find amazing in the western world and indian world indian education system is anything lower in fact our indian education system is much more superior than the western education system but i think we give a lot of importance to marks and memory which the others don't and they spend more time in soft skills and we in india don't and that's what we try to do in our work at school of meaningful experiences so please communicate and communication is nothing but your ability to express articulate share your point of view and it requires a little bit of effort uh, i was a child who had a stammering problem i still do but i learned it because somebody taught me and i gave a lot of time to it and this is nothing but a skill which can be learned and there's a movie called ratatouille that you all must have watched that anybody can cook and i believe that anybody can speak if given the right platform and encouragement confidence this is a feeling that you can do something your abilities and it's not again about your marks alone it's many more complex feelings that you need to start thinking about 
and teenagers go through a lot of problems because the hormones are changing and you don't know what to do about it and that's where confidence takes a lot of beating puberty is not a fun place to be in there are lots of issues parents alone can't talk to you about it friends sometimes are not there to talk to you about it and you feel alone and helpless and go into your shell but i think you need to talk about it build your confidence by small small techniques which are again very very easy the third is curiosity like how mark watney was very curious to create hydrogen oxygen and water i think that's how curiosity helps us creativity how creatively that entire team brought him back to earth by reducing the weight of his rocket and other creative solutions collaboration there are multiple teams all over the world and you all have to collaborate using zoom call phone call emails uh, face to face meetings so if you are going to keep quiet and wait for a miracle to happen i don't think it's going to happen collaboration is the future and the last is your ability to take decisions the ability to negotiate with people and your ability to stand up and get your work done with competence is going to be extremely important so please invest in these skills uh, nobody is going to come uh, with a plate in front of you i personally feel that it all it's all about investing that time and making sure that we all learn together and uh, we have to collectively solve this problem this is where parents also have to come together and i encourage them to join this journey uh, our programs are not only just for uh, teenagers but also for working professionals and entrepreneurs and i invite all of you to join us to see if we can make this uh, platform a little bit more robust make sure that we uh, work together so that all of you can have a more meaningful life so this is where i stop yapping and this is where i encourage you to send me a question on chat so let's see who sends me the first question on chat uh, i am waiting so let's talk let's get some discussions going and i also want to hear from parents any parents in the room please send me questions any working professionals uh, please send me a question and any teenager also so go ahead let's see if we can all discuss something and move forward so please start those uh, questions coming i am waiting here i'm going to stop my share and i can see all of you oh i can see so many of you unbelievable switch on your videos let's see each other wow i i like that so many of you unbelievable amazing all of you raise your hands and wave at me let's see oh wow look at that unbelievable i love it all right okay so i got the first question anant anant says how do you see that we do practice the 6c so anant great question and is this the same anant who was my colleague at intel oh there you are and is that your daughter there awesome very good okay wonderful look at that unbelievable i can see so many of you i've seen familiar faces so anant i'll take your question just next to you is my student from imb abhishek there you are and you are in netherlands or india or which part of the world are you in right now i'm still in netherlands been uh, close to a decade now here wow and unbelievable see how technology brings us together i know i know super i can't tell you how happy i am to see all of you so anand here's the answer to you every day you'll get multiple opportunities to practice 6c the two simplest ones is communication and collaboration for your daughter and for teenagers a very big problem teenagers face is that they hesitate to go and meet someone new like in the apartment there are some people you don't want to talk to some uncle and auntie but this is a great chance for them to just try out these things that overcome those hesitations and go and talk to someone it could be you know uh, some neighborhood auntie who's doing something and talk to them or some person who is also living in the apartment so you will get opportunities but you have to overcome that fear that what would people think and this is called social anxiety and teenagers suffer from social anxiety 
by the way don't worry if you are suffering from teenage anxiety uh, so social anxiety because i can tell you that even the corporate world suffers from social anxiety uh, many people just sit in their corners in their laptop they are very happy there not because they love the laptop but because they are just anxious about what the world is thinking about them and uh, you should find a way to overcome that second is in a school whenever a teacher is saying any questions raise your hand and ask questions and these two are the simplest i can tell you nowadays with youtube and uh, these video conferencing features upload your videos show it to people then there are these groups uh, which meet every week and practice all of these things you could come there come in our classrooms we will be very happy to have you we have a summer camp coming on 30th march come and join us online i promise you that i will not judge you i'll only make it easier for you because as a child and as a teenager i suffered a lot because of my lack of communication skills so try these two things and i was very lucky to get good mentors who encouraged me and that's where parents like you anant have to play a very crucial role that encourage your children they'll come and talk to you so instead of challenging them say great idea let's do this sometimes as parents we become a little bit critical and we have to learn to be encouraging like for example here's a parents nightmare we come from very conservative families and our children are very modern and they are the mirrors of the world and they may come up with this amazing uh, dish like i'll give you my 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 example that i tell everybody all of you have seen some food show like master chef and uh, master chef has one problem that after seeing master chef your children are going to get heavily inspired and they're going to make the worst dishes possible in the world and give it to you to eat and it has happened with me so here's the scene i enter the room i mean i come from office i had a class lot full day of uh, teaching and i enter the house and my children my son and my daughter are ready with this salad and i looked at the salad and i saw pieces of banana and pieces of onion and they call it the famous banana onion salad now first of all it is the worst combination in the world for salad and second you as the father have to try it so what does a father do and this is my son and my daughter their eyes beaming like dad we made this dish for you and i'm like okay all right so i take a fork and pork poke it in the banana and the onion and i eat it and it is disgusting but i can't say that and my children are waiting okay how is it so i'm like it's crunchy i can feel the crunchiness of the onions and the mushiness of the banana and my children gave a fist bump to each other yes and if i would have said that day that this is the worst dish ever you guys don't even know how to cook i would have probably done a disservice to them but i think this is what a parent has to go through so good job well done are two words i encourage all parents to use with your children i can't tell you how a child feels encouraged when the parent says well done these two words use it liberally we indian parents feel that if we give too much of well done bigger jayega bachcha but please don't think like that in fact you should say well done a lot of times and there is no harm in encouraging your children a child craves to be appreciated in fact all of you even parents you go to office and the only words you want to hear from a boss is well done and i bet you he doesn't say it so imagine your own children they are they're craving for well done from parents and from teachers so at least parents we should talk about that so anant does that answer your question okay cool now let's go to one more question uh, next question is from sunita how can we integrate these six c's into our school teaching all right sunita i don't know where you are because we have lots of windows but i'm sure i'll trace you and uh, but that's a great question in fact cbse curriculum should bring this up uh, and many other state boards should bring it up but the problem is not just a curriculum sunita a severe problem in this is lack of teachers 
and uh, this is something i've been working on and i i'm i teach in ivy league colleges of india i'm very lucky to be a part of them with utmost respect to these colleges the teachers don't exist and we don't have teachers in communication and soft skills in our country and that's one thing i would like to create so if sunita you and others in this room want to get trained on the 66c philosophy and uh, teach it in your schools please write to me and we have a training program that we will offer free to teachers and we want to scale it up because i think schools should integrate this curriculum and it takes a few minutes of time per day to help a child become a lot more confident excellent question nrpendra kumar sends me a message that uh, i want to join the 6c program nrpendra we will send you yes you are eligible to join we have a program called executive program in 6c's and my next batch is starting in april it's an online program you can join from anywhere in the world it's on a weekend it's about 10 weeks and we are just finishing our first batch of 20 people actually 21 people sorry 20 people and the youngest is a 17 year old student from class 12th who finished a gap year and the eldest is a 40 year old entrepreneur and lots of executives in the middle from finance and advertising industries so please send a mail to ruben or whatsapp him and he will be very happy to share with you our brochures and you can sign up there is a private message from redmi which i think it's a phone not a name so the phone owner of redmi says i'm a fresh graduate and ready to join how can i make the most out of my working day so that i can do my mba in more meaningful way so the owner of redmi these first two years are very critical for you my request is give your best uh, there is one problem i see in youngsters that they so i'll explain it to you using a perspective which happens to all of us including me when i left the college at the age of 21 and i went to wipro here's my dream my dream was that i'm going to go to wipro and mr azim premji will call me the rakesh i was waiting for you now come and solve my problem and you know that was my dream that this is who i am i mean i i should now be this advisor to the ceo because i am the best engineer in the world so i was there and when i went to wipro i was it was exactly the opposite mr prem ji did not call me mr prem ji's vice president did not call me the first person i met was a security person and he said go sit in that room so i sat in that room and only thing that i went through was training programs because uh, the industry feels that the education system doesn't produce great people and i was shocked that i have to now go through a 44 day training program i mean it's criminal imagine i am a four year engineering degree graduate now i am supposed to go through a 44 day training program at wipro and this is in 1997 nowadays i am told that some companies do a 3 month 6 month training program and it's a only a sign that our education system is completely useless so my request to you is that lap it up and uh, do the best you can these 2 years will give you foundations of values of a corporate world learn things like hard work i think this is something we teachers and parents talk about i know nobody likes it but at my age i can tell you if there is one thing your generation should do is a lot more hard work because this is what the older generation wants to see in you any job given to you do it with the best of your ability i am not saying that you have to be you have to lose your dignity if somebody orders you and makes you feel bad that's not what i intend but all i'm requesting is that you are 20 something this is the first job if you can take any job given to you with the utmost respect and deliver it you will only rise ahead and you will then get admissions in mba programs people will bend forward to get you in a college rather than the other way where you go to a job don't do anything prepare for a cat exam write a cat score go to another mba program and then still come out of it disillusioned because the foundations of work are exactly the same so that's my request to you owner of redmi hard work nothing nothing will breed that and if i were to give you one c that you should pick up that's competence and competence is about decision making and negotiating with that 
All right, Geeta asks a question. In your experience, are schools welcoming soft skills and encourage experiential learning? If not, how many more years before India takes a plunge? Um, Geeta, I'm not. I'm not a. I think that day where a school says, "Dear Miss Geeta and Mr. Rakesh, we are stopping math and we are increasing soft skills." I don't think that day will ever come. Our culture is a heavily math science driven culture. Our culture is also heavily driven by a feeling that Western education is superior to Indian education. Our culture is also driven by a feeling that English is better than vernacular. Now, those are bigger problems than soft skills. And I don't think our country is going to change that fast because this is not a problem of our country. This is the problem of the colonial system that we come from and the way the education system has unfortunately evolved today. But the good news is that many schools today, which are starting, are adopting soft skills curriculum a lot better as compared to the good old system. So the problem is not just with the school alone. The problem is also with parents. And I must tell you that there are many parents in this group. Many of you, if I give you a choice that dear parent, would you like to send your child to a course called six C's or would you send them to, let's say, a Baiju or a career launcher or an Allen? I bet you will send them to Allen. And I don't blame you for that because everybody wants to keep their children's future safe. And I encourage you to do whatever is best for your child and do whatever is best for you. But this is a mindset shift in parents also. And many parents today are changing. So I know many parents who don't want to send children to these test prep places because they want the children to be happy. But those are minority. In fact, I saw one of my friends sitting here, Archana and her husband. Um, Archana, are you there? Wave your hand if you're there. Okay, I can't see her, but she was there. I saw her sitting somewhere. In fact, next week, Archana will come to our webinar and yeah. she will talk about... Archana, are you there? I heard your voice. Yes, yes, Rakesh. Yeah. Oh, there she... There, there. There they are. See, there they are. They are from Indore. Uh, Archana and uh, Manish ji are there. And uh, Archana will come next week and she'll talk about how does she keep her children engaged. A very top problem... But I think the point I'm trying to make is that very few people will be there. Majority will go towards standard, run-of-the-mill, non-risk-oriented decisions. So let's accept that. But the world is also changing very fast. And I encourage you to uh, think about that, Geeta, that uh, very few schools will welcome it. We all have to encourage our schools to do so. And I'm happy to partner with you to see if I could talk to your schools and take them forward. Very good. Okay, moving on. Shweta. Shweta says, I'm a soft skills trainer. I would like to let, I like you to let me know on inputs on challenges in the training or learning and development industry. So Shweta, the L&D industry or the learning and development industry is fairly straightforward. There's a budget. They have to spend budget. And whoever can give a training program at the cheapest possible price, they will give the contract to them. In that game, the brand of the company or the content plays a very crucial role. So I encourage you to arm yourself with a good content, a scientific um, method to make them feel that you're trustworthy. And uh, uh, I think if you can do that, then this industry is a great industry to be a part of. But otherwise, it's going to be a very tough thing for you to survive. Samir, Samir says, is some curriculum in tangent with the current system or does it work parallelly? Great question, Samir. Uh, so there is no correlation between the existing system and some system. I think we are a parallel system. We offer soft skills first. Will we create a school which offers only soft skills? The answer is maybe. That's my dream and ambition. But as of today, we are a uh, parallel school system uh, we or a university system. Actually, we don't even compete with them. We offer a program after school and after work hours in an online method or a physical method or a blended method. And that's how we work. Second question Samir asks, 
to we get a certificate after we finish our school how can i showcase my credibility similar to soft skills great question samir uh, these skills are measured by two areas one is i hope your videos come online your speeches come online your books come online your written word is being used that's communication i hope people start using the words that this person is very charismatic and confident and you're invited to leadership positions and uh, your decisions are very noteworthy so there is a very clear way of measuring soft skills and the six c's and that is by one word how many followers follow you and if the answer is 0 you have to work harder if the answer is 10 you have to work harder if your answer is 1 million i think you have to keep working because for every follower the equation would be very very different but this is a very scientific uh, uh, topic it's been there for thousands of years and it was taught to kings earlier and now we are trying to bring them in schools uh question from akshat raghav what advice would you give to anyone who finds speaking in public terrifying in your opinion what role do schools play in helping children to gain confidence um i think a child loses the confidence because of two reasons one is the peer pressure and when they come in front of a classroom and they are not able to give a good answer and somebody else laughs at them so that breaks their confidence and sometimes a teacher also plays a very critical role they say that oh you haven't done this properly you couldn't do this properly so i think the confidence breaks in multiple ways um a good teacher should encourage and i think teachers are good but they are in a pressure to finish the curriculum and give marks that's where it kind of misses the whole point also the schools have become bulkier so in a class there are 30 40 100 children sometimes not easy for a teacher to manage these things so my advice to someone who finds public speaking terrifying this fear is similar to the fear of any other phobia and the spectrum can be low or high so like some of us are really afraid of heights some of us are afraid of public speaking and the only way we can overcome this fear of heights is to go up on the second floor look down practice and keep improving and that's what we do in our program and so we give a scientific way to help people improve we don't push people on becoming like shashi tharoor or barack obama's we believe that everybody's got their own uh, individuality and we want to build on that excellent questions love the kind of okay zishan to everyone thank you zishan that's a great compliment thank you very much and shweta again i have answered the question what advice akshat again your answer has been answered so i'll go to the next one shraddha gupta i want my daughter to join your summer camp she is 13 please give details on that so shraddha my team ruben is there uh, you could whatsapp them and ruben if you're on the call please remember to give information to shraddha gupta um shraddha your daughter is most welcome we have i think as of today four more positions left in our first batch uh, we are amazed at the love and attention we are getting from all of you so please quickly sign up your daughter i would look forward to have her in the summer camp geeta chakravarty again i think i answered this prashant prashant is there oh prashant is my colleague and i can see their daughter where is their daughter i can see um Ishan V, hi. This is Ishan V. I like your way as I have not figured out anything yet. I want to do so many things. What is the best way to ask your teacher a really dumb? Oh, there she is, Ishan V. How are you doing? Yeah, there, good. yeah. So Ishan V, there is nothing called dumb question. Okay. All questions are awesome, and you have to keep asking. You have to keep trying. and uh, i am here to tell you that if you ask a question to me i will not judge you and it's okay to be confused you know i still haven't figured out anything but as of today i love teaching i love doing my work maybe tomorrow i'll change and i don't have to prove anything to anyone except myself so there are two things i'd like you to start thinking about confusion with yourself is normal confusion with others is not required so don't compare yourself to anyone don't depend on what they tell you 
your parents are people who love you and i know both prashant and jaya very well and i encourage you to ask as many questions as you can um don't worry about it if somebody laughs at you just ignore them because i know at your age it's very critical to not experience that horrible thing but get used to it there is no perfect world out there waiting for you ishanvi the only thing you have to do is develop your own skills not bother about such people and keep doing what you have to do and uh, come into my programs and we'll talk more about these things okay thank you all right okay so ashwini asked a question ashwini already responded uh, there she is ashwini gives a very nice answer there is no dumb question the dumbest question is the one that's not asked ashwini whoever you are please switch on your video i'd like to see you and uh, or you could wave what a great answer i mean see this is how our classes are uh, by the way i don't even know many of the answers that, of the questions you're asking but through collective experience we figure these things out okay murli also gives a very nice answer just ask without worrying about what others would think so i love that um, murli you can also tell me about these things sometimes i get worried especially if my wife is around i am very worried about what i ask um, don't tell it to her but okay ayushi ayushi is there with her husband yeah i can see ayushi wonderful and ayushi asks a question as you just shared we will be having at least five careers in our lifetime but this time between transitioning from one to another career comes with lot of societal pressures and doubts how do you suggest tackling this pressure and self doubt so excellent question ayushi the biggest problem in at least the careers that you are facing are two big problems and i know you that's why i'm pinpointing this to you a curse that we all have is we have been very good academically and we all have taken decisions based on society so at your age you are a post graduate with a lot of accolades and uh, let's say you are a post graduate in i don't know statistics or math but deep inside you love doing something else like cooking or teaching the first thing you have to be worried about is that your own doubt that can i do this is going to hamper you it's normal and the second is your society will get ki are itni padhai likhai karne ke baad khana banayegi and that's that's the problem we have to deal with so my only request to you is get used to these two things uh we as a society need to deal with negative emotions what we do is we keep negative emotions outside our bedrooms but bring them in just like how we bring happiness and joy in our bedrooms let's bring sadness depression also because these issues are very critical for us and it's your life and uh, we have to deal with it the only way you can move forward is take the first step and you don't have to shock the system so for example let's say you want to be a cook i'm just making this up become a part time cook on saturday and sunday and that's good enough i think that's absolutely good because you don't have to tell the world i resigned and i'm doing this plus you'll get some feedback from people and if you listen to my podcast i've talked a lot about these issues and all teenagers also you have to go through that that your success is not only your views the success is about your society your parents and the society we live in get used to it and uh, you have to negotiate with the society and with your own self now here's the simple mathematical model let's say you are on point a which is what do you want to do and let's say there is a point b which is this is where you are sorry uh, this is where you are and this is what your dream is so you are in a job but your dream is to cook if the two points are very far you'll experience stress and if these two points are very close you'll experience joy this science will never change now you can live in stress that's what all of us do that okay 10 saal baad dekhenge we'll buy a house we'll buy a car and we'll do all of these things and we'll come but the stress is still there now that is your choice do you want to take that decision today and bring them together or do you want to negotiate and keep it by the way there is one more word i want all of you to remember and that word starts with s it's called sacrifice 
sometimes it's absolutely okay to sacrifice your dreams all right don't be in this assumption that all dreams have to come true i think sometimes dreams need not come true sacrifice is a very good word my father sacrificed his career for me and his wife and his my elder brother he wanted to go to a great country which was offering him a package but he said that if i take my children and my wife there i don't want to get influenced by a culture that i don't connect with he sacrificed and till today when i talk to him that dad do you regret that he very proudly says no i am very proud of that decision so sometimes ayushi and everybody in this room if you want to become a nasa rocket scientist it's okay to cancel that dream let's become a simple engineer in a company do our job come back home watch netflix have a great food and sleep majani life and uh, treat yourself in those things because if you don't you're only going to get stressed and take some time to do that and uh, this is going to be a constant challenge for your generations so i am very worried for all of you because i don't want you to live in stress i think you should decide quickly so what you need to do is come to a decision and move on the more you do analysis paralysis it will only hurt you okay all right so ruben says kindly drop a message on whatsapp if you want to know about our courses please remember that zishan asks me a question that i um all right okay so yeah that's a great thing zishan i must tell you that speaking in english is a very good idea there is one more suggestion for you um watch english movies with subtitles and that's a very good powerful way to improve your english i did that my friends who come from hindi medium and kannada medium and tamil medium did that we were in us and in us there is a tele text option in television where you can read the subtitles uh, and i encourage you to speak in english with each other i encourage you to um, watch movies and uh, have uh, like a uh, subtitles i encourage you to not worry too much about it and one of my friends who comes from hardcore hindi medium in uh, rajasthan used to have a book called rapidex english speaking course and he used to memorize it and he used to talk to me and i used to say that i'm not going to do it for free so he used to buy me a cup of coffee and we used to share it together and that man today is one of the biggest wealth managers at lic and he speaks amazing english you can find out the slang of marwadi and rajasthani in his tone but he gets his work done and if you look at all the world's leaders they don't have good english you look at french people italian people oh by the way they are in terrible shape in corona virus but if you look at japanese and people from israel and germany their english is not good it's only we indians who feel that we should have shashi tharoor english and my answer is don't worry about it as long as the people understand what you are saying through your face and through your words and a combination of other feelings you're okay and let's win the larger battle of confidence and collaboration so i hope that answers your question then i have uh, sukumar oh sukumar i can see you there and uh, he says that he is a president of an old school and would like to know how you can associate with us sukumar i'll connect with you offline and i'd be happy to find a way to collaborate with you and help your children in that school that's how some will grow we will grow through partnerships and collaboration and i would love to impact the children in that school so i'll connect with you offline sukumar you have to unmute yourself or you can chat with me so we'll move on sukumar you can chat yeah, with yeah, me yeah I've... yeah yeah no no uh, yeah. just remember that we are in mysore not in bangalore we'll figure out a way and we have a online platform so i'll tell you all about it right okay so we are a online digital company and we'll we'll work with everybody around the world so i'll talk to you on that right okay deepak asks a very good question uh uh how can we as a parent ensure that a child becomes more curious brilliant question a uh, deepak two things please read a book yourself i think parents are the first teachers of children if you don't read books your children will not read books 
if you don't demonstrate confidence your children will not demonstrate confidence if you shout at someone your children will shout at someone and there is an amazing movie called ferrari ki sawari and i want you to see that movie in that movie there's a scene where this father takes the son to a cricket match in the morning and there's a red signal it's 4 o'clock in the morning red signal is red he stops the scooter and there's a police constable who says to this father that sir koi nahi hai chale jao but sharman joshi the father says no my son is watching me and i can't break a law because if i break a law he will learn to break a law so my request is pick up anything around you like a book or a television or a mobile phone and go deep into how it works that's curiosity and talk about it with your children there is one more great thing called quizzing q u i z z i n g and uh, do you read the hindu deepak you can nod if you can or if you don't you can nod like that today's hindu has a very good quiz and i want you to pick that up because that's amazing curiosity and you and your son and children or daughter could play a game of general knowledge quiz and you can incentivize each other gk quiz was the best thing that increases curiosity and uh, unfortunately we have missed all these things today we should bring it up in our home thanks to corona virus you have nothing to do at home so play a quiz tonight with your children and your friends and it's amazing fun nowadays there's an app you can download and you can quiz each other and it's quite fun so that's how you increase curiosity all right so next one is from asit how does creativity help us creativity is a huge topic i'll give you a perspective there are three eyes of creativity the first one is you just imitate what somebody else is doing and i can tell you i am a great imitator i am not very original in my ideas i look at something working imitate it and i start using it in my life the second is i improvise on it and even the six c's i did not discover them they have been here for thousands of years but i have improvised on them using my own science and my phd and the third is innovation and this is where value comes in so when you improvise and somebody pays something for it you innovate so without creativity things will not work flipkart applied creativity in a very simple way that they introduced cash on delivery and cash on delivery is a very creative way to solve the problem and if you look at the martian and all these movies you'll find creative solutions uh, that are right there and creativity does not mean art alone creativity is just about thinking differently but to think differently you need to slow down you need to think a lot more and you need to absorb your own mind and the signals you get around if you don't have time for yourself you'll not be creative if you're going to be looking at cell phone all the time reading and thinking i'll become creative the answer is no so creativity requires a lot lot uh, idleness loneliness and that's where creativity comes in in fact the best friend for creativity is a word that starts with b and that's called boredom and if you don't like being bored you will not be creative so my request is all of you parents out there please help your children to be okay with boredom and archana will come next week we'll talk a lot about these issues as we go along boredom should not frighten you in fact if you are restless that should frighten you and being restless is not equal to being productive so please be clear about these thoughts there's plenty of research that talks about how creative people do nothing for hours sit down and are lazy procrastinate and these are absolutely normal conversations so creativity requires those concepts as we go along so that's the answer to your question asit akshaj actually then sudarshan why are parents and schools fond of teaching kids robotics and aeronautics rather than what's necessary um see sudarshan i think parents love children see i have two children and i also want my children to learn aeronautics and robotics because i sometimes get afraid that if they don't learn coding they might lose out on something so there's peer pressure like how you have peer pressure parents also have peer pressure then many parents nowadays are working in these it companies which are mncs 
and when they read a report of how robots and ai will take up jobs they do get scared and they don't want you to miss out so i think there's a lot of pressure in a school system that they are reacting to i think you should understand their problem as well and be a part of this discussion with them but i also encourage you sudarshan to learn something that you want to learn if you're going to do nothing then your parents will push you in something because they are very worried that hey instead of wasting time go and do something in robotics and aeronautics but if you are very engaged in let's say painting or math or history i think nobody is going to bother you so pick up something and enjoy doing that as you go along then we have vijay um vijay has put an answer that he is unable to put his thoughts who's elder to me and can't express he's very thin i want to become an ias officer but i'm not able to do the main and most important thing which is expressing my thoughts vijay excellent question i'm glad you asked this i'll give you a hint and then i'll give you some more suggestions your body and your face and your mind are very important for your self confidence and whether we like it or not our confidence comes from our own beliefs whether we like ourselves and when you say that you are very lean and thin maybe you are suffering from low self esteem maybe you have people who are making fun of you maybe you have are very harsh on yourself and i want you to know that i understand what you're going through and i am so happy you asked this question because this is the kind of problems our children are facing and we want you to talk about it a child or a learner who wants to become an is officer but is bothered by their body and their low self esteem has to be solved and this is my role at school of meaningful experiences please talk to me more see if you can connect with ruben and find out about programs this is exactly we want to work with that you are very capable i think you can become a great person but if you are going to be stalled by issues like this we have to help you to deal with it and i was a by the way i was a very fat kid i was about 34 on my stomach and i was very short this was when i was 8 or 9 years old or maybe 10 and at 10 years a 34 stomach is not fun i can tell you that so everybody would make fun of me people would keep pinching me and uh, i was called mota motu was my pet name i mean imagine i was called motu with lots of affection not a very great thing to do but i overcame that and i worked on myself my parents and my brother helped me a lot my friends helped me a lot and we have to deal with these situations but my request to you is don't let your body issues decide your identity they are one part of your identity make your work as a bigger part of your identity and don't try to become an ias officer just because it's a better sounding designation if you really want to work with the country and solve a problem with the country then ias is a great option but if it's just another parental pressure that you'll get respect and great dowry and a great career i think you're mistaken i think you'll have a terrible problem even if you become an ias officer because i have many friends who are in the best careers and extremely unsatisfied because that's not who they are so your identity is a very big part of your purpose so please talk to us more and we'll find a way to give you some help on that an um, amazing question by far the best question today okay there are some more questions i'll take uh, um varsha varsha asks a question how do you think we can embrace the changes at the workplace how do we face challenges in education system so i think a very big part of changing the world is to change ourselves a flexible mindset is what i encourage you to do varsha our programs for executives talk a lot about these things and uh, it's not easy to change also in the corporate world and in the world there's a lot of politics so we have to learn to deal with that and we resist change because we're comfortable so a very big part of the six c's is this ability to go through changes accept failures and make it a little bit more worthwhile for you to go through that so please see our brochures websites and it's a very deep question which requires a full one hour seminar i think i'll pick some of these questions and do more webinars as we go along there are few more questions and i may not be able to take all of them so i'll take few of them and ruben please store the chat 
so that we could take these questions and address with the participants either offline or in a webinar. Um, Adar says, I usually see this problem with the people who are quite intellectually good and always deal with logic only. So sometimes they're not able to see their mistakes. You're absolutely right, Adarsh. Nobody likes to see their mistakes, including me. And when I get a feedback from someone, I didn't like your class, I do get upset. But I think that's the training program that we try to do in our 6C program, that a lot of this is connected to failures and rejections. If we learn how to deal with rejections and failures, this problem will not come. Sadly, education system does not gear us up for failures. It helps us only to succeed. So those people who are in the rejection and failure category, very difficult for them to come up. And the constant achievers find it very hard to accept their mistakes. So this is something I think in leadership, we talk a lot about that. Okay, last question and then others, I promise you, I will get back to you with detailed answers. Uh, Ruben, again, request that you please uh, store the chat so that we can uh, talk about these questions. Last question is, can you suggest a few books for young adults? Oh, of course I can. Um, in fact, I have some books right there. And uh, maybe I should point out one book I want you to read is uh, by Yuval Noah Harari, Sapiens and Homo Dias. Homo Dias is right there. And one more book on my table is uh, Factfulness. Then you can read a lovely book on how we think in corporate world, which is a behavioral economics connected thing called Thinking Fast and Slow. Besides that, take up some light books. Harry Potter is a great book, by the way. And you don't have to read management books to become a leader. Harry Potter has got all the leadership uh, qualities. Our Gita and Mahabharat have amazing leadership qualities. Bible and Quran and Talmud have all the leadership qualities. So pick up any two, three books that connect with you. Go slow. You don't have to pick up a difficult book uh, to sound intellectual. Some of the best books are actually very, very simple. So that's uh, the last question. So others, uh, I would like to now close our session today by announcing what will happen in the next uh, uh, session. And uh, what I think we will do is we are going to do this webinar every week. Every Sunday, five o'clock, we are going to do a session and we are going to take your inputs to see what topics to do. Next week, we have Archana and her daughter who will come in and they will answer one important question, which is parents have a big problem because of this coronavirus. that what do we do with our children in our uh, homes? And uh, this is where I have invited Archana ji and her daughter. Archana ji has homeschooled her children, so she would know how to engage a child and bring them to a level where they are ready to go in the world. So we'll take that in the next uh, webinar. And please tell us more topics, all you parents, youngsters, if there's a topic you want us to discuss, I will bring in an expert and we'll have a conversation together and we will learn together. And all of these webinars are completely free. Uh, I want to do more and more engagement with you. So once again, I want to thank all of you who have come today. Um, I learned a lot from each of you and we are going to engage with you with more topics and the remaining people, uh, including, I'll tell you the names. Um, there is a person, um, the ambitious person, the ambitious person, I'm, I love this name and he's asked me a question, I'll take it up. Jeremiah has sent me a message, I'll take it up. Jyotsna, I acknowledge your question and I'll take it up. And uh, the ambitious guy has many more questions and I love that. And I want to take these questions as we go along. I can see the ambitious guy. There you are. Hi, ambitious guy. Nice. I like that. Vinita has asked a question. I will take it up. And Shalaka, I think excellent uh, appreciation. I acknowledge it. And I will take your question. And uh, all other questions, Aruna Murthy, Nivedita, uh, Asit, uh, Shweta, I acknowledge all of that. So 
my promise to you is i'll get back to you uh, send me a whatsapp message using ruben or you can email me at rakesh.gotwani at some.education send me a problem that sir i want to talk about this and i promise you that i'll get you an expert and we'll talk only about that problem and we'll do this every sunday 5 o'clock together so let's build a community of people who want to solve the education problem of india i think our education system is very good it needs to be rethought it needs innovation so let's make it better so that all of you in this room benefit from it and our children also benefit from it so once again thank you very much i had an awesome evening with all of you and uh, thank you for being such a great audience uh, ruben please ensure that these uh, chats are recorded and we'll end the meeting in two or three meetings uh, minutes thank you very much have a nice day tata bye bye yeah thanks ruben have we recorded the chat yes 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 it's recorded all right okay so i'm ending the meeting now okay.